What's going on guys, Legit MHX here, and welcome to the ultimate complete destiny pre-Rise of Iron guide. So basically what this guide will be is a brief but extensive overview of everything that is in destiny. This guide is meant for people that are completely new to destiny and have no clue what a strike is or what cabal are. So if you have already played destiny a good amount, then I suggest you click off this video because it's mainly for people that are new to destiny and just have bought it or are intending intending on purchasing it. So before I get started, remember to drop a like if this video does help and do subscribe as I am back into Destiny and I'm going to be pumping out so much content in the future, especially when Rise of Iron is released. So without wasting any more time, let's just get right into it. So what is Destiny? Destiny is a sort of MMORPG style game that is relatively first person with a few exceptions. The game has a huge lore and story behind it that players can get lost into. Basically uh, an orb called the Traveler has come to our galaxy and brought an enemy with it and pretty much there is only like one city left in the entire of Earth and you are a guardian who is going to fight off all the evil along with other guardians obviously not much backstory really is needed so i won't go into that too much but basically you are a guardian and you go and kill enemies that's all you really need to know uh regarding the law now if you are interested in is interested in the story or the law then you can go on to bungie.net i believe and read some of the law or just watch some other law videos there's plenty of those on youtube but that is pretty much destiny's history now i'm going to put a table of contents most likely in the description so if you guys are looking for a particular thing in destiny then feel free to look at that as a reference now the first category that i I will be covering is pretty much Destiny the game. So Destiny being a RPG style game, you make your own character. So when you're, when you're first starting off, you get three very tough characters to choose from. Hunter, Warlock and Titan. All three of these are really balanced and you can just choose whichever one you think sounds cool. Nothing much to it really, they're all really amazing and you'll be happy with whatever one you choose. You then go through a character customization menu. It's nothing amazing, but it's there to play around with, and it really doesn't matter be much because you are going to be wearing your armor most of the time, so it really doesn't matter. Now, after you have finished customizing your character, you will start a mission where you'll be outside a place on Earth called the Cosmodrome. Your ghost, which is your companion throughout the journey, will help you finish the mission and will show you old Russia on Earth. It's pretty straightforward, and after you have finished, you'll be taken to the tower, a place I will give a tour of later in the video. Now I'm going to be going a bit more in depth into the classes. First I'll cover the Titan. Now each class has three subclasses. Titan has Defender, Striker and Sunbreaker. Each class has their unique abilities and cool stuff that they can do. But in this video I'll be covering mainly their special attacks or their superchargers. When you first start, you will start with Striker and at level 20 you will unlock Defender. And after doing a quest from the Taken King expansion, you will unlock Sunbreaker. Now each subclass has its own unique supercharge. S uh, Striker has Fists of Havoc, which is often called Fist of Panic in the Destiny community. Um, this will pretty much make your character smash on the ground, killing or damaging any enemies that are in its radius. This is best for clearing a group of enemies. Defender has Ward of Dawn, or often called Bubble. This will create a shield sort of like a bubble in which you can avoid damage from whilst inside. Um, this is best for avoiding damage and shielding yourself from high damage entities, i.e. bosses. Um, Sunbreaker has Hammer of Soul, which gives you flaming hammer hammers to throw at your en enemies. It's good for high damage and groups of of enemies. Now moving on to Warlock. Warlock has Voidwalker, Sunsinger, and Stormcaller. When you first start, you will start with Voidwalker, and at level 20, you will unlock Sunsinger. And after doing a quest from the Taken King expansion, you will unlock Sunbreaker. Voidwalker has a Nova Bomb, which is often called Nova Bomb. <laughs> Nothing too special, but it creates an explosive bolt of Void a Light, uh, which you can shoot at your enemies. It can be modified to shoot three bombs. It's useful for groups of enemies, and usually the Crucible. Sunsinger has Radiance, or often called Self Res. That's pretty much self explanatory. Once you're dead, you can self resurrect yourself uh, if your super is fully charged. It's useful for raids. Finally, uh, there's Storm Trance. Storm Trance makes, makes you turn yourself into lightning, where you can chain arc lightning and zap enemies. It's good for clearing out large groups of enemies. Now finally, moving on to the Hunter. Hunter has Gunslinger, Blade Dancer and Night Stalker. When you first start, you will start with Gunslinger and at level 20 you will unlock Blade Dancer and after doing a quest from the Taken King expansion, you will unlock Sunbreaker. Gunslinger has Golden Gun. Upon use, a Golden Gun will spawn in your hands with 3 shots. These will deal massive amounts of damage. It's best for the Crucible, which is the multiplayer PvP section of the game. Blade Dancer has Arc Blade, which upon use will make you have blades and put you into third person view. From here, you can deal massive amounts of melee damage. This is again best for the Crucible, but it is 
good with other enemies too. Finally is Night Stalker. Night Stalker has Shadow Shot, spawning in a bow and arrow that has massive, amount, massive amounts of damage. The shot will also spawn an orb which tethers or binds all nearby enemies together and weakens, weakens them all. It can be upgraded to 3 shots. All of these super charges can be modified and more bonuses can be applied once they are unlocked in the subclass menu. Now all these subclasses do have grenades, melee, special abilities, but I won't be going into them too much. Uh, most of the grenades are similar to each other. They're either uh, grenades that explode and turn into a lot of like seeking mines or maybe one explosive tracking grenade. There's a lot of variety and it's they're all pretty much the same for each subclass, but they are pretty cool. Now they also have special abilities like the hunter does have invisibility as uh, as a few of the sub in one of the subclasses. The warlock does have a pretty cool melee as well and titans also have um, pretty OP um, uh, melee as well. Now I'm going to go over the enemies and the enemy factions that are in the game. There are four main enemy factions that are within Destiny as of today. Those are Fallen, Hive, Vex and Cabal. You will mainly find Fallen on Earth, Hive on the Moon and Vex on Venus as well as Cabal on Mars. <laughs> However again, there are exceptions, like you will also find different looking Fallen on Venus as well. Vex can also be found on Mars and some Fallen also on the Moon. Now on screen you guys should be seeing what those enemies look like. There is also an additional faction that is called the Taken. The Taken are basically upgraded version of these enemies. They have been upgraded by the Hive God known as Oryx in the Taken King expansion. They are the same enemies but sort of black and white and are much more powerful. Now there are different ranks of enemies. Now there are different ranks of enemies. Enemies with a yellow health bar are often referred to as Megas or Ultras. The Ultras are usually bosses. From the Fallen, higher ranking enemies are usually called Captains, whilst the Hive, they are called Knights and Minotaurs for the Vex and also Phalanxes for the Cabal. Don't worry about the names of the enemies too much, they are quite irrelevant but just shoot at all the bad guys. Now these enemies often also have shields. Most of the higher ranking enemies do have shields, not the low ranking ones. These shields o o overlay their health and obviously must be destroyed to harm the health. Depending on what gun you c use can help damage shields quicker, but I'll cover that in the weapon section. Enemies also usually have critical spots. Most of the time they are their head, but they differ. Like the Vex, it's their stomach, but hitting the critical points are obviously the way to go. Now once Rise of Iron does release, a sort of new faction is coming out. This is called Seva. The Fallen have been pretty much like transformed and, and now they are like Seva. Uh, so they are pretty much being controlled by Seva. Uh, this basically means that they are super super strong and have crazy abilities that are much harder. They look much more red than they uh, than before due to the Seva. So those are the enemy factions in the game currently as of today in Destiny um, currently. Now as you play the game, you'll get more familiar with these factions and don't worry if you're a little confused about all these enemies they'll come pretty easily to you once you start playing now moving on, I'm going to be talking about the two major aspects of Destiny, that being PvP and PvE. Now PvP, for those that don't know, is player vs player. This is where you basically fight real life people. There are three specific areas where you can perform PvP. The Crucible, Iron Banner and Trials of Osiris. Basically the Crucible is your normal multiplayer area. It houses game modes like Control and Clash and Rumble, which are your traditional domination, team deathmatch and free for all. However, none of your weapons within really matters in terms of damage, so like a high level gun will do just about the same damage as a low level gun and same same as for armor. If you have a high level piece of um, helmet, it will take the same amount of damage as the low level. You are, Everyone has the same health in, uh, P, in, in the Crucible. Now Iron Banner is pretty much control, but instead your guns and armor do matter. So a gun with higher damage will do higher damage, whereas a low level gun will do low level damage in Iron Banner. This is where you can show off and use all your awesome gear that you earn against other real life players. This event takes place once a month for one week. Next is Trials of Osiris. Now Trials of Osiris is pretty much your competitive arena. This is where you go to completely try hard. It's a 3v3 intense game where if you die then you are dead and you cannot respawn until the next round. But you can be revived by teammates and obviously you have to annihilate the entire opposite team. I wouldn't advise going to the Trials of Osiris unless you, are, you have mastered the Crucible and Iron Banner. The Trials of Osiris usually takes place on the weekends I believe. Now for PvE. PvE is pretty much everything 
other than PvP, obviously. Um, it's all your missions and strikes and raids and open world and all of that. Pretty much whenever you fight an enemy, that's PvE. Player versus environment, or, en or some people say enemy. I will cover the missions and strikes and etc more in depth later on, so stay tuned for that. Now I'm going to go over the planets and the open world. There are basically three planets you can visit, Earth, Mars and Venus. But there is also the Moon, the Reef and the Dreadnought. All these places except the Reef have an open world explorable free roam area. Now what do you do in these areas? The open world provides opportunities to level yourself up, maybe look for gear or maybe farm some materials. Materials are needed to upgrade your gear and they can be found on these planets. The Earth has spin metal, the Moon has helium filaments, Venus has spirit bloom, Mars has relic iron and the dreadnought has worm spore. The open worlds also have public events. These are cool events that randomly take place which are sort of mini side missions. These can give cool rewards and experience. Bounties which are also small mini quests can also be completed through the open world. Your sparrow which is your vehicle can be used to explore the open world and is your transport. There is also on the dreadnought a place called the court of oryx and something sm similar is also coming to rise of iron on earth. However I will cover that later on in the video. These open world areas are mainly for exploration again and they are really fun to explore with your friends. Now moving on I will be discussing missions, strikes and raids. So starting off with missions. Missions are pretty self-explanatory. They're most of the time linked with stories or quests. Missions can be played with up to three players. There really isn't anything much to say about missions. So moving on we have strikes. Strikes are sort of really hard missions but they aren't linked to any story. These strikes usually involve killing a lot of enemies to get to a place and then killing a final boss or multiple final bosses. These bosses may have cool mechanics which you have to follow to kill the bosses. Strikes are your best friend when you want to grind for some loot and gear. They take around 10 minutes to complete each and there are different level of strikes but the higher the level the more rewarding. These are a great way to chill out and just play Destiny with a couple of your friends. These strikes also can give you exotic which is the highest level of gear that you can get in the game. So watch out for these strikes, they're going to be your best friend in Destiny. Now moving on I'll be covering raids. Raids are your end game ultimate missions. These things are the hardest things in the game. With a six player group and no matchmaking, you have to go through an in-depth mission working together as a team to defeat the raid. These are basically like your heists, except they are much much harder. The game does not tell you whatsoever how to solve it. You must work as a team and figure it out yourselves. Or you know, YouTube is also your teammate when it comes to these raids. There are usually multiple bosses in raids and they take a while to finish. Without any idea on how to solve it, you might not even get through it. And even when you know how to solve it, you, you your group might take days to finish. However, there are checkpoints but every week they do reset on Tuesday. Currently there are three raids right now in Destiny with fourth coming in Rise of Iron. Vault of Glass, Crota's End and King's Fall are the raids. Vault of Glass is a Vex based raid. This was in the original game at release. Crota's End is a Hive based raid. This was in the Dark Below expansion and King's Fall is a Taken uh, based raid. Um, This was in the Taken King expansion or Taken King DLC. The King is pretty much Crota's dad and you kill him after killing Crota. Yeah. The next raid is called the Wrath of the Machine. This is going to be in the Rise of Iron DLC. We don't know much of the raid, but it looks like there's going to be a really angry machine in it. These raids are by far the most fun things I have experienced in Destiny. They truly are very fun. Yes, you may be on the verge of rage quitting when doing these raids, raids, but working with your team to crawl your way to the end of the raid gives such a good feeling of accomplishment. If you plan on buying Destiny, then you have to and must try out these raids. So now I'll be giving you guys a tour of the tower. Now the tower is basically your social space. This is where you can do pretty much all your behind the scenes work. No actual uh, no actual combat goes behind in the tower. So I'll be giving you guys a tour of the tower. So moving on to the right, you have the Cryptarch. The Cryptarch basically um, decrypts any engrams that you find. Engrams pretty much look like this and they will give you gear depending on what color they are. Up top you have the Gunsmith. The Gunsmith will pretty much sell you guns and they'll also he'll also sell you um, foundry orders which will pretty much give you guns on arms day. He will also give you miscellaneous items which can be pretty helpful. In the middle of the tower you have the postmaster. This will pretty much give you any items that you have not that you have maybe lost in the open world or that have been gifted to you from the postmaster pretty much. In the middle of the tower you have the vault. The vault pretty much houses all your items that aren't on your guardian. So it's a good way to store all your items that you don't need really need right now. Right up top you have the bounty tracker. This guy pretty much gives you bounties to complete. Vanguard and Crucible. PvE, PvP. And they will give you experience and reputation for that faction and maybe even some materials. Down at the bottom you have Eris Morn. This is the character that was introduced in the dark below for the uh, for Crota, the 
Raid Crota. You can buy many stuff from uh, her and they're pretty cool. Next you have the Crucible Handler which will pretty much deal with all your Crucible stuff. And you can buy lots of gear from him uh, from, with by getting crucible reputation also you, you this he is the guy that you will be able to get swords from next is the crucible quartermaster who will sell a bunch of arm a uh, bunch of weapons um from the crucible and finally down here you have your vanguard mentors now respective to your um race you will have a certain mentor so if you are if you are if you are a hunter um, you will have Cade 6. If you are a Titan, you will have Commander Zavala. And if you are a Warlock, you have Ikora Ray. They will they will give you armor and ghosts and cool stuff. <laughs> also, they will give you quests and missions to do in the game. Now, moving to the right, you enter the Tower Hangar. Down here, you can find Dead Orbit, which is a faction leader. Um, he pretty much will sell you lots of um, items like armor and uh, weapons. For He'll pretty much sell you... Um, armor and weapons, but you need to have him ranked up and this is done by wearing a this is done by swearing allegiance to the actual um, Faction there's also two other factions that can be found in the tower You then have your Vanguard quartermaster, which is pretty much like a crucible quartermaster, but for Vanguard He'll also sell you pretty cool weapons next you have Amanda holiday She is the shipwright. She'll pretty much sell you ships and finally right at the edge of the tower hangar You have the future war cult um, this is pretty much a, another faction, and when you swear allegiance, you can buy their gi. Now moving to the left of the tower, you enter the tower north. Here you can find Eva Levante, the Guardian Outfitter. She'll give you cool stuff to customize your character, and emblems and shaders. Next you'll have New Monarchy. This is the third faction in the game. They will also give you cool items if you swear allegiance. And finally, right at the edge of the uh, right side of the left side of the tower, you have the Speaker. The Speaker will give you cool items and pretty expensive stuff as well. He'll give you um, cloaks or special items that correspond to your class. So Warlocks will get the Bonds, Titans will get the Marks, and Hunters will get cloaks. He'll also sell you ghost shell. Now the tower is a social space so you're gonna see other people here and you can interact with them and it's pretty fun. The tower is a great place to find new friends and it's if you don't have any friends on Destiny then this would be a great place to start. That pretty much is the tower. It's a pretty cool place and it's definitely gonna be a place you're gonna be vid visiting a lot. Now I'll be showing you guys the menus that are in the game. So starting off the uh, planet selection menu, this is where you can set your destination. Starting off at the bottom you have Earth, Old Russia Earth. Then you have the Moon, the Reef, Venus, the Crucible, the Vanguard, Mars and the Dreadnought. Going to Earth you have different things like missions and strikes as well as patrol areas which is pretty much open world. Um, you can also go to the tower, which is pretty much the traveler. You click on the traveler, set your destination, launch, and you'll be traveling to the t uh, tower. This is also what raids look like. So this is the Vault of Glass. This is Crota's End. And on the Dreadnought, this is King's Fall. Over here, you have Crucible. So here you have Rift, Control, t Clash, Skirmish, Salvage, and a whole bunch of other game modes. Also, Trials of Osiris is up here. Under the Vanguard playlist, you will have the Strikes playlist. So, the level 36 Strike, the level 20 Strike, and the level 41 Strike. On your bottom left, you'll have some quick selection menus. So, you have um, two Crucible game modes, which will change, and they'll give you rewards. This will change every single day, as well as the Daily Heroic. Um, this, will change, this mission will change every single day, and you can get lots of marks, legendary marks from it. Later on, I'll be discussing what legendary marks are and what they can do. Also, the uh, Vanguard Heroic Strikes can be directly accessed from here, as well as the weekly Nightfall Strike, which is the ultimate strike, which will give you a lot of good rewards. Now I'm going to go through the menus of your character, so like, pressing start. First off, you'll have your character, so up here, you have your subclass selection menu. So here you have Night Nightstalker, Blade Dancer, and Gunslinger. Here is my primary weapon, so right now I have an exotic we equipped, I can change it just by doing that. Down here is your secondary, or your special. Um, Again, you can change it pretty easily. Then is your heavy, uh, which is like rocket launchers, um, machine guns, and like exotic swords. I mean, not exotic, but normal swords as well as exotic swords. Then you have your ghost shells, your helmet, your gauntlets, your chest armor, your leg armor, your special item, which in my case, I'm a hunter, so I have a cloak, and then your artifact. Down here, you also have some equipment. So you have your sparrow, you have your horn, you have your ship, you also have your shader that's equipped, your emblem, and your emote that you have equipped. Moving to the left, you have a, a quest menu. Here you can access all your quests and what you really, what you need to do. To the right, you have your bounties, so all these bounties that you need to complete. 
And at the bottom, you have your reputation counter for all your um, factions and groups. Right to the left, you have your roster with your friends list and everyone they can invite. You can also change your uh, fire team privacy settings and join other people through here. In your inventory, you have different things like your materials and your consumables. These are just some things that you can just like hover over and read and that you will understand what they are when, once you receive them. Also, you have like missions and stuff down here that are relevant to things that you're doing. And the consumables are things that you can use. So for example, heavy ammo synthesis will give me heavy ammo right on the spot. Same for special ammo synthesis. Up here is your currency counter. So I have zero silver right now, 79 legendary marks, and 22,232 glimmer. These are your currencies pretty much. Moving to the right, you have your settings. So you can log out, you can change your brightness, your screen bound, your audio settings, whether or not you want your helmet on in combat zones. Um, your accessibility, your controller behavior, your look controls, your button layer, and your look and move controls. Now that's pretty much your menus for Destiny. I mean, there's nothing to, no other menus really other than th them too. Now I'm going to move on to gear, or more specifically, your weapons and armor. Now basically, there are three classes of weapons, primary, special, and heavy. Under primary, you have auto rifles, scout rifles, hand cannons, and pulse rifles. Under special, you have fusion rifles, shotguns, sniper rifles, and sidearms. Under heavy, you have rocket launchers and machine guns, and also you do have swords, and once Rise of Iron releases, battle axes. Now weapons classify under four damage types, three of which are elemental. The elements are solar, arc, and void. The fourth is kinetic, which is just like bullets. Now solar weapons will damage opponents with fire shields, arc weapons damaging arc shields and void weapons damaging void shields. There are only three elements currently in destiny. Now under armor you have a helmet, gauntlets, chest armor and leg armor. You also have your special item. This varies between characters. For the hunter it's a cloak, for the titan it's a mark and the warlock it's a bond. You also have artifacts which will give you defense and extra perks. Now gi comes in different classes. They go from common to uncommon to rare to legendary to exotic with common being the easiest to find an exotic the hardest and the best. You must note that you can only equip one exotic weapon and armor at a time, so you have to be very tactical in what you wear and what you use. Now how do you get gi? Gi can be earned by doing anything really, missions, strikes, crucible, raids are always by far the best way to get the highest level gi, but again they are really hard to do. Sometimes you may get, you may get engrams, these will show what class they are but you must take it to the crypt arc and decrypt them to find out what they really are, hope that it's something high level. Next is the level system. The level system in Destiny is pretty simple. You have two levels in Destiny, experience level and light level. Your experience level caps out at level 40. This is done by just playing and gaining experience. Light level is a little different. Light level is basically the average of all of your weapons and armors rating. So add all of your armors defense rating with your weapons attack rating and find the average. That is your light level. So say all my gear is 300 defense and 300 attack. You can expect your light level to be 300. Currently the light level cap is at 335 but that will be raised to 400 once Rise Vine is released. The best way to level up in terms of experience is to do bounties. They give a lot of experience really quickly. The best way to level up in terms of light is to do the raid and get better raiding gear. There isn't much to it other than playing the game. Choose what suits you best, whether it be strikes or raids or crucible and grind it. You can level up easily that way. Although raids will always be the best way to get higher light. Now the final thing I'm going to touch on is infusion. This is where you get two pieces of gear from the same class and put a higher rating onto the onto the weapon onto the gear with a lower rating so say you have a 310 scout rifle and a 300 auto rifle if i infuse my 300 auto rifle with the scout rifle then i will get a 310 auto rifle however i have lost the scout rifle so you sacrifice something of higher rating to make something else that rating it's a good way to level up guns you particularly like and introduce a strategy to leveling up Next is currencies and materials. Now there is one main currency, Glimmer. This can be used to buy random things. It won't get you any exotics or anything, but it is needed for things like upgrading or infusing or buying rares or foundry orders. You also have legendary marks. This is used to upgrade and infuse legendary items. They can also be used to buy legendary gear. They are very useful and there are a lot of ways to obtain them. Finally is silver. This is sort of a microtransaction currency. With silver, you can buy emotes and other cosmetics. But to get silver, you need to use real money and buy it off the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store. Sorry, I don't know what the Xbox Store is called. Um, now, there are lots of materials in the game. I won't go into them too much, but they are very useful for upgrading or leveling up weapons. Spin Metal, Helium Filaments, Spirit Bloom, and Relic Iron are the four main materials used to upgrade. Don't get rid of these because you'll be needing them. Also, Exotic Shards are also very useful. They are used to upgrade exotics. They can be obtained by dismantling exotics. This was just a quick 
overview of the materials in Destiny. However, the best way to understand them would be just to play the game and find out, because there are quite a few. Now finally, I'm just going to talk about the Court of Oryx. This is a place found on the Dreadnought. It's in the open world. Here, with your friends and other random people on the Dreadnought, you can start summoning enemies and bosses. There are three tiers. A Reciprocal Rune is Tier 1, a Stolen Rune is Tier 2, and an Antiquated Rune is Tier 3. You can obviously guess that the higher the tier is, the harder it is. And also, the higher the tier, the better the rewards. This is a really fun way to grind with friends and get lots of rewards. And trust me, the Court of Oryx Oryx does give heaps of engrams. Now finally, there is also going to be something similar to the Court of Oryx in Rise of Iron on the Cosmodrome. However, we'll have to wait and see how that will exactly work. And with that, we have come to the end of this guide. This was a huge video and probably the biggest video I have made on my channel yet. It was a brief overview of Destiny and I didn't go in depth too much, but it's just for beginners and new people to Destiny as an introduction. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and did learn something from it. And I hope you did find this video somewhat helpful. If you did, then feel free to drop a like and subscribe, because I'll be covering a lot of content regarding Rise of Iron, and most likely I will be streaming it. But anyways guys, I thank you all for watching to the end, and this was once again LegitMHX, signing out.